I saw this topic being spoken about in the Bergheim community subreddit and I think I was just to kind of touch on it a little bit because I'm still confused as to how this has become such a thing. So I've been reading that there's been an uptick of people in the scene that I am part of, you know, maybe the dance music scene, electronic music scene, techno scene, whatever it may be, the club scene, that are, that are recreationally on nights out going out and taking ketamine right and i don't necessarily understand what's going on i don't get how ketamine has now become a rave drug because from the times that i've taken it which has maybe been a handful of times maybe like three times in my entire life it's legitimately been something that i have questioned my life decisions after i've taken it i'd be like you know what i'm never doing this again it's completely ruined my night um it's you know disturbed everything i was going to do and just made me question how people can rave on it and now it's become a really popular thing because i'm reading reports of people going to fucking djs playing at techno festivals dj playing at clubs and stuff dropping behind the booth and having a couple of flipping bumps of ketamine while they're playing which is to me one of the most creative drugs you can take because it legitimately shifts your perception of fucking reality so to be in a k-hole and to attempt to fucking play at a nightclub seems to me like one of the most risque decisions you could ever 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 take like why would you do that to yourself i do not understand but clearly people are doing it and i don't know if it's because i'm just not adept at taking it I'm not too sure if it's them taking a certain type of ketamine. I'm not really too sure because the only one I know is there's two in it. There's one that's called like a rice one and there's one that's more like crystal. I forgot there's two versions anyway that you can usually get. And, and usually people will smash it up and they will grind it up and try and sniff it. And from my experience, that stuff tastes like glass going up your nose. It's not pleasurable at all. It's very, very sharp sort of like pain in the inside of your nostrils when you're doing it. it really doesn't feel pleasant so the bumps aren't even enjoyable right um the effects might have be but the actual process of taking that thing from powder into your nostrils isn't the most pleasurable experience so i can't imagine taking that stuff and then doing it to then go and play it's absolutely wild but i'm wondering if the reason why people are taking ketamine now in clubs might have to do with the price because the price and the quality of other drugs, especially stuff like Coke and stuff like MDMA and Molly and stuff and um, LSD, whatever it may be, um, the quality of those stuff is starting to go down, but the price is starting to go up. And there's also the very, um, very real possibility that you might get stuff that's like laced with fentanyl and shit. And most likely you're not going to get that with stuff like ketamine, right? Um, you, you, well, you hope not. So maybe people are being a bit more safe, especially in maybe the Berlin scene where people kind of, you know, even though they're 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 fucking caners, they still have a lot of um um trepidation with just ingesting anything and everything. So maybe they're trying to limit um the amount of um you know bad things that could happen by taking something that they know that most likely isn't going to be cut with something. Maybe that's a reason. But I'm honestly bewildered and shocked that people out there are honestly doing fucking ketamine as a clubbing drug. It's absolutely crazy to see. It was already crazy when I saw people doing balloons to to go out with, right? Because again, I'm I'm used to growing up at a time when balloons were usually sold to you as you were leaving the club as a sort of like okay here's a final little thing to do before you leave on your way home but i couldn't imagine doing it as like a part of my night out to go out as a sort of like precursor to my night or to kind of aid me or during my evening it just doesn't mean something that i would ever want to do but clearly i'm in a minority because there's a bunch of people out there especially djs who are legitimately taking this and also flipping being able to play and dance around in clubs and stuff and i can't understand why that's the case i think there needs to be a lot to be said if you're getting into a scene new and you're just starting djing it's really important i feel like when you start getting involved in it to just be as sober as possible when you're playing personally i feel like building a habit where you only can dj when you're fucked up isn't a great thing for the long term and i think in general you need to get to a point where you realize for better or worse where you let where you sit are you somebody that DJs as an excuse to get fucked? Or are you somebody that enjoys to play music and if somebody provides you with some drugs, hey, to you know, to maybe increase the fun of your night, you might take it. But if you're more so the party person, you might have to just avoid avoid the DJing thing because it probably isn't going to go well for you, especially being an artist long term and shit. Because sooner rather than the end, you're probably going to hit a wall. And I just imagine as well, artistically and creatively, I'd want to have the use of all my functions 
to get the best work that I can out of myself, Stone Cold Sober, without relying on that crux of drugs. Because when they're not around and then I hit a creativity block, I'm going to feel so shit because I feel like I wouldn't have the capacity to do it without doing the drugs. So I feel like a lot of people should focus more on just doing great work, making great art, um, you know, uh, making a name for themselves, building their career before they go down that path. And from what I've heard anyway, it's mostly just established, you know, stand, you know stand up, so established fucking DJs who are obviously indulging. But I just feel like in general, it's not the p correct thing to do. I just feel like as a performer, I feel like you owe the fans, you owe the punters, a, you, you, you owe them your all. And I don't think you can ever give them your all if you're fucked. It's just impossible to do so. Um, it's not going to end well in that way. So I think the best thing to do is to probably try and play as sober as possible. And then if you want to have fun and do what needs to be done, do it after your set. I think that's always the thing that I've kind of adopted. And really for me, whenever I was playing out, I would be too nervous to do anything because I want to make sure that I'm remembering my set. I know what sort of stuff I wanted to play. I'm kind of, uh, you know, um, aware of my surroundings so I can quote unquote read the room and I know what to play next and blah, blah, blah. I've got a million things going through my head. The last thing I'm thinking about is getting fucked on booze or getting fucked on drugs. That can wait another time. Whether it's later down the night, whether it's later on another night, it's not that imperative. Obviously, when I'm out, it's a different story. But when I'm playing, I want to be, um, you know, I'm at my best basically i don't want to be super fucked up and slosh and for me personally i don't see how you can mix the both i really don't but again i i've seen certain streamers online who legitimately will stream for six plus hours drinking and taking loads of drugs and shit and they seem fairly okay you know some slurred words here and there but they seem fairly functional so maybe it's just me maybe i'm just a p-u-s-s-y and maybe i need to put my big boy pants on get flipped up and start doing what everybody else is doing online and start doing what everyone else is doing online.